What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and uh, it is a beautiful day here on the weekend, and we're gonna be doing this video over a couple days. This is gonna be part two, where I'm gonna talk about breeding of ball pythons. I'm also gonna, I got a very, very awesome gift from a very good friend of mine. Over the weekend, I'm gonna show you that as well, and I'm gonna show you some really cool horses that just moved in across the street. So guys, stay tuned, this is gonna be a fun video. All right, we uh, starting off by feeding the, we always feed the tortoises every morning here. The albino sulcatus is doing really nice. So, you know, it's funny when it's a little chillier outside, they don't seem to eat as vigorously. Um, even though it's still warm here and it warms up during the day in Florida here. If it's like in the 70s, I don't see them, them devouring the, uh, usually I give them two heads of romaine and these guys will knock it off but sometimes if it's a little chillier, they're kind of just, eh, well, we don't really want to eat so much. Look at that beautiful red eye on that albino sulcata. I'd love to get these guys outside at some point. I, I gotta try to build some kind of an outdoor something for them. But I'm also nervous because, you know, I can't put the certain parts of my property where we kind of have like nice grass and we spray, so I, they can't be eating that grass. So it's like a whole, I gotta figure out the right place to put them so that they're safe. And, and they're at that stage now where they can definitely start growing at a more accelerated rate if they have a, I think if they have a more room to run around and eat more variety of stuff. So, kind of cool. Love these guys. They're uh, best friends. And I might even soak them a little later today. They love, they love getting a little soak. As soon as you put these guys in like a tub of water, they just instantly poop. <laughs> they love it. Okay, let's go take a look at uh, some more cool stuff. Look at these beautiful horses. My neighbor across the street just moved in. And look at them, these are gorgeous. Look at those hoofs. They look like Clydesdales. I'm not really sure what they are. They have to ask her. He's rubbing his, rubbing his chin on the fence, see? Look how beautiful. These are great looking horses. I'm so lucky. Weren't we lucky, Logan, to have horses right across the street? And we don't have to take care of them because they're not, <laughs> not ours. We can just admire how beautiful they are. Just right across the street from our house. Look at that. Literally across the driveway. Oh, I love those hoofs. Look at those. They're like little body bowls. They're like the calves. Beautiful. Beautiful horses. Yeah, I think maybe. Look at the braids they have in there. In there. And their mane. They gotta be some kind of Clydesdale. I have to ask Katie, the lady across the street, what they are. Look at that. They're like gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I had to show you guys this. I wasn't gonna do any more videos today, but look at this Russo Red Pastel Possible Super Hypo Sterling. This holdback female is so gorgeous. This might be the best one I've ever produced. I wasn't even going to hold anything back this year. Um, this is actually from 2020, but I, I couldn't, I could not keep her back. She was so gorgeous, this thing. I mean, I would swear there was blood in here, you know, and there's no blood gene here. This is just selectively bred Russo Red, you know, Vin Russo started this, you know, probably 30 years ago, picking the reddest and reddest. And I've been doing it now two generations with the Sterlings. I just try to breed this, the most red ones to the most red ones and breathtaking, really breathtaking. All right, this might be the greatest present I've ever received from anyone. My friend, Jason Ha, he's a, he's a pro bodybuilder and we're, we've been known each other since he's probably a teenager, I've known him when he won T Nationals years ago. He's into snakes and he, as a nice gesture of our friendship and his respect for me, brought me this male Boland's Python that he was raising up. He has a couple other ones and he wanted, he knew that I loved the snake and he kept trying to, he kept trying to ask me what he can do for me and I said nothing. I said, the only thing you can do is give me your Boland's Pythons and I said it as a joke. And he drove from Tampa, Florida, all the way here down here to uh, Cape Coral, two and a half hours. And he brought me this gorgeous male Bowens Python. I'm beside myself. I can't thank him enough. 
This snake is so gorgeous. Look at the, how dark black this thing is. Is this thing just amazing? Look at that little prehensile tail that's grabbing onto the tree branch there. This thing, it's, it's a sweetheart too. He's a really, really well-tempered male. And I am just beside myself. He's gonna be, he's gonna go into my uh, four foot vision cage in my, my cold room, or as I call it, the Australian room. <laughs> Even though he's not from Australia. And uh, because they need a little bit of uh, cooler temperatures, around 74, 75 degrees. And I am just beside myself. At some point when I open up my new reptile building, I will build eventually. This guy will have a really beautiful display cage. Actually, I have a display cage coming. I, might, I wasn't going to put him in it, but I might now that I have him, and I didn't know I was going to have him, I might put him in that display cage. This thing is absolutely breathtaking. I'm, once again, I cannot thank Jason Ha enough. Super, super great gift. All right, guys, it's breeding season here, as we know. My breeding season usually starts October 1st. I start, you know, cooling things a little bit in, in the snake room. And we're talking ball pythons now, of course. You know, a lot of people breed year-round. They don't really change temperatures at all. I will breed a little bit year-round, but the majority of my snakes I like to cycle together so that I'm not getting snakes, you know, like a nutty amount of snakes all year-round. Because then sometimes you don't know which snakes are gravity, which ones are not. So I, I kind of cycle them all together. So October 1st is what I do is I start bringing the temperature down in the room. I don't touch hot spots. I never touch hot spots in any of my snakes. So they're always at 88 degrees or, they, or around there. So the, the snake, no matter how cool or how warm it is here, if the snake wants to warm up to digest its food or for whatever reason, it can go in a hot spot. These snakes know intuitively, okay? When the temperatures, the ambient temperatures in the room start to get you know, cooler, that it's breeding sign. That's 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 one of the signals. There's a lot of triggers that will trigger these things, but in ball pythons, the, the cooling really triggers them well. The reason I don't drop hot spots at night, some people will drop at 10 degrees, so if it's at 88, it goes to 78 overnight, it's because I found that when I did that in the past, that number one, I didn't get any better rates of, of, of you know, babies or rabbit females, and number two, I got more respiratory tract infections. I don't know what it is with ball pythons, they just, they, they're especially when they're breeding. I guess maybe they're stressed, and the males especially. I'm not even talking about the females. The males, the males will get respiratory tract infections if they get cool. I, like I said, it could just be because they're stressed out because they're, they're working too hard breeding. And I take them out once a week to feed. Um, I feed my uh, ball pythons throughout the entire breeding process, unless they don't want to eat, of course. If the males usually my males don't stop eating, but the females will stop eating obviously at a certain point. And, and then you know you're good, you know, so, and sometimes they'll start eating again. So don't be nervous if your snakes won't eat and uh, during the breeding season, because sometimes they'll take breaks. And as long as they don't have any respiratory, there's nothing wrong with them. And they, they look like they have good weight on them. Don't panic, but watch for them. The ones that don't eat, you want to take a look at sometimes because they can get respiratory tract infections. And if you catch it fast and you start treating with antibiotics, you might not lose the whole season, but if you get if it gets really bad and you have to treat them for you know a few weeks, sometimes you can lose that whole breeding season. More likely with a female than with a male, so keep an eye on that. So my males, we keep in all these V35s. So you know, once again, they got their hot spot. If they want to warm up, if they want to come to the, if they don't want to warm up, you're going to find them sitting more towards the front of the of the enclosure. Now. They, these guys just ate the other day, so they're gonna probably you know, stay more towards uh, the back because they're, they're basically digesting a meal. Um, once again, my males don't, this is about as big as my males get. I don't let my males get very big um, because they tend to get sluggish and they don't breed as well. Some people have bigger males. This is a, this is a pretty big male for me. Uh, my males usually don't get this big, but I like to feed them a little bit more as the breeding season starts because sometimes they'll stop eating. And when they start breeding a lot and expending a lot of energy, they can lose weight really quickly and you don't want to lose. And believe me, I'm not the only one. A lot of people have lost males because they just, they breed too much and they just lose too much weight and they go downhill. So you want to keep your males well fed. Okay. Prior to the breeding season, just like you do your females. And then of course my females, I keep in these, um, V70 tubs and I always give them a hide box to give them the ability to, to hide under there and, and feel secure because if you do that, they eat better. For some reason, when they don't have a hide box, a lot of times they won't eat. You know, some snakes will eat no matter what. 
Uh, we feed here live mostly to the ball pythons because it's just a pain in the neck to have to wiggle these things. And the ball pythons are very finicky. The, bo the boas and the carpet pythons will eat anything pretty much. So keep your water bowls clean. That's another thing, you know, that I'm always trying to keep on top of as well. Uh, because they can get bacterial infections from the water bowls if they're dirty, okay? Try to keep your, you know, your paper or whatever you're using, you know, if you're using rep to chip or some kind of aspen, don't go too long without changing it. And that that's the reason I don't use it. I actually like rep to chip a lot, actually. I like the coconut husk, but I found, find that it works so well that I don't clean the enclosures enough because I'm always looking in there. I'm like, oh, it looks great, you know, because that stuff absorbs everything. So I find that with the paper towels, it forces me every time they pee or poop to go in there and change it. So that makes it easier. So basically what I'll do is I'll cool in October, starting November 1st, I usually start introducing my males and females, the, the majority of them, that's that's now now. So now we're putting males in with females and we're seeing locking already. Obviously this is just, you know, nothing's happening really at this point, unless you have a, a female maybe from the year prior that didn't go, she might go early, but most of these snakes are just kind of getting to know each other, so to speak. And you might get locks, but they're probably not gonna be locks that are gonna result in any kind of, you know, pregnancy or anything like that so keep them going i take them out for two days out of the week so we feed on wednesday here they come out wednesday they eat a wednesday i give them thursday off friday like right now it's a friday we put the males back in with the females and then i keep them in there till the following week same thing we take them out on on tuesday or wednesday so they're getting about two days off per week to eat and 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 basically digest their food same thing with the females they're eating and digesting and then they're going back in together and I keep doing this basically until the female doesn't want to be near the male anymore. The female's not eating. I know she's probably gravid. And then the male doesn't go in there anymore with her. So that's the process. And then hopefully, you know, the female will have her, you know, pre lay shed. And then it's 30 days after that, you know. And there is a, usually there's a, not always, there's a pre ovulation shed also a lot of times. Some people miss that. They don't even know that's it. Usually I catch the pre lay shed. I can tell because she's not eating, she will shed count 30 days i'll usually mark it i'm sure pablo will find another clip <laughs> that's a different color maybe we'll go green and we'll know that that female's got 30 days to lay and then we'll you know we'll keep checking for eggs as we get closer and then when we get the eggs we put them in the incubator and obviously in 60 days after that they're going to hatch and then we have babies that's the process it's not that hard you know it sounds difficult when you first get into it because you've never done it but it's really not that hard. And with ball pythons, you can make a lot more mistakes than you can with other, other, you know, like boas or carpet pythons. Ball pythons are way easier. In other words, if the temps are not perfect, they'll probably breed anyway. But like I said, the, the, the night drop is, is, is not necessary, but the ambient room temperature drop is. So I go from an ambient of about 80 to 81 degrees, um, and I'll drop it, it goes into the 70, 75, 76 degrees. And I'll keep it that way for eight weeks eight to 10 weeks and then I bring the temperatures back up again and try to increase the humidity as well because that works well with the boas and we're going to do boa video another time but boas like high humidity after that initial you know period now boas are different too because I don't feed them during the eight weeks that we cool them so whereas ball pythons eat the entire time so a matter of fact ball pythons eat way better when they're breeding than they do during the you know the rest of the year a lot of times during the rest of the year it's hard to get them to eat so they know when they have to eat. Bull pythons are very intuitive. They'll eat when they want. They, they'll stop when they don't need to. And you got to just read the signals. And that's what it's about. So I hope this helped you guys out a little bit. You know, sometimes it's, it's hard to figure out what exactly to do. But you know what? There were no mistakes. Try things. You might find better techniques than I just gave you. And the bottom line is that the only thing that I would like to do that I don't do, that I do, do, don't do in this particular case is I don't have any windows here. I would love to have windows with natural sunlight so that, because the, these snakes also cycle according to light cycles. I try to set light cycles up by turning the lights on and off. But you know, when you come into your, your snake room, you gotta turn the lights on to clean stuff. So if there was natural sunlight, I think that might be one more cue. But then again, ball pythons live in the in termite mounds under the ground. So that might not be such an important you know trigger for them. It probably is more relevant for maybe carpet pythons and boas, but when I build my next facility, there will be definitely natural light in there. All right, guys, thank you for joining us. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below or hit me up directly. If you're enjoying all the coverage here at Muscle Serpents University, show us the love. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Hit the like button. Guys, we'll see you back Monday morning.